Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this session on neuro linguistic programming. Um, my name is Chandra Shankar, and I am an NLP trainer and a master coach. Um, I've been practicing NLP um, practices for approximately four years, and uh, I wanted to share uh, what it is, uh, why, it, why it is important to use it, uh, what it is exactly, what how it works, and how you can use it in your day to day. Um, so, uh, why linguistics? Um, why, why does linguistic matter? Well, linguistics actually refer to our verbal and non-verbal language that we use to communicate with ourselves and others. Um, linguistics are important because uh, we use linguistics to label ourselves, label our emotions, label how we feel, identify ourselves, identify others. So linguistics are, uh, are very important that way. Another reason why we use linguistics is for communication. Like I said, uh, verbal and nonverbal language. So uh, how we think, how we act, everything depends on linguistics. And it's all about uh, understanding linguistics in a, in a very unique way. Uh, neurolinguistic programming helps us. Uh, we, we normally understand linguistics as verbal language um, and uh, what we say, what we think, uh, and how we read, what we see, everything uh, that we do is linguistics. So it's, it's very important to understand how linguistics really make a difference in our lives. And uh, we take it uh, just, uh, we don't really understand the importance of linguistics till we have actually given it uh, a different perception. So I'll talk about uh, about that today. So what's what is definite? What is neuro linguistic programming? Well, uh, there are many definitions of neuro linguistic programming. If you go and Google out, you'll you'll see that um, there are hundreds of definitions that have come up. Um, it was it's a, it is somebody some people say it's a science based approach. Some say it's a psychology based approach. But basically, uh, a neuro linguistic programming or NLP for short is a methodology that we use for producing excellence in ourselves and others. Right. Um, this particular definition that you see uh, really uh, uh, I, I really feel very strongly for this one because um, I, I'll read it out. It's, it is a process for modeling the conscious and unconscious patterns that are unique to each of us in a way that we continuously move towards our higher potential. Right? It's NLP is not a thing, but it's study of what works, especially of what works well. So NLP basically helps you understand what your own thinking is, and uh, both your conscious and unconscious. By what what I mean, conscious is basically your aware awareness, how you really are sure, uh, how you behave in a particular uh, particular way. So you can everybody becomes an expert in hindsight, and when we reflect back, okay, how do we how did we think in that situation or how did we act in that situation we think in the past and we can uh, understand our thoughts understand our behaviors um, in that way um, but when we think about our habits for example right so uh, and our uh, unconscious reactions for example uh, when i say unconscious reactions uh, I, you are, are walking down the street and you suddenly see a, a hole in front of you or you're running and you suddenly see a, uh, some, some, some rock or something in front of you and suddenly jump, right? That's an unconscious reaction. You don't have time to think. You just act out of instinct, right? That's unconscious pattern. So every time you're, you're running and you, you see something in front of you, either you move left, you move right, go, go over it. It's an unconscious reaction. And when you become aware of it, it becomes conscious to you. So how we uh, look at things, how we uh, treat our own behaviors for those conscious and unconscious patterns is what, is what uh, helps us get better. So the learning that we have with every experience, it's it's an ex it's a conscious learning, right? You consciously learn something and slowly, slowly you practice it until it becomes a part of you. When you say it's part of you, that's the conscious pattern, becomes a conscious pattern. 
And when we talk about producing excellence or modeling, um, it's basically repeated actions or repeated behaviors that provide pro, that give us consistent results. And neuro linguistic programming provides us that that exact thing of consistent results uh, in achieving what we really want in life. Right. So we define something and find out people or or processes that have helped us help others get to that particular goal, and we model that. Um, and we use the same patterns, same behaviors, same strategies, and and uh, get the results exactly like others did. That's kind of and then a nutshell how NLP or neuro linguistic programming helps. Uh, what it is, so it will have various kinds of techniques. It will have various kinds of practices, um, and we we just need to ensure that we we get everything right. Moving on, let's let's unpack neuro linguistic programming. Can you can you guys see my screen? Just just making sure. Yes. 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 Yes, Chandra. Yeah. Okay. Great. So when we unpack neuro linguistic programming, it the 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 three parts to neuro linguistic programming, neuro linguistic and programming, they are all basically deep three different things, and. When we talk about neuro, the first part of it, it's basically our nervous system, and uh, it's basically what, how we think, right? That that's part, the neurological parts of our our consciousness, is is basically the ner the nervous system, um, and and the five senses. Our interaction with the world is either visual when we look at look look at something, or auditory, or basically when we hear something. And, and this is not necessarily uh, looking at something that's external to us. It's also that we imagine, right? We can imagine a picture or we can actually imagine something that we, we can look through our mind's eye. Um, people, we, you, you probably heard about that. And when you talk about auditory, it's more about hearing, right? You can hear your own voice in your head or you hear external sounds, you hear my sound. So that, that's all auditory part of it. Uh, nervous system, so, so everything is linked. So what we see and what we hear, we kind of uh, package them together and see, okay, uh, how it makes us feel about what we see and hear. And the feeling part of it is, is the kinesthetics, right? When we talk about olfactory and gustatory, this is basically sense of uh, taste and smell. And, and we, we normally don't, work through taste and smell as much, but uh, we work in, in the, from the five senses, the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic are more prominent, more primary for us, and uh, sense of taste and smell is less, uh, in, less important. When we come to linguistics, so that's the neurological part of it. How does uh, our mind or our senses come together to understand what's going on outside or inside of us. From a linguistic, I already talked about linguistic, but linguistic also has um, two, three, uh, uh, three spe specific things. One is the spoken language, uh, what we say out, uh, or how we actually think uh, the words that we speak or words that we think, that's, that's the language part of it, right? The second, is the tonality. And now to, from tonality, it's the words that, in how we say those words. For example, if I, I completely relax myself and, and speak in a very, very slow or monotone langu language or words, it will be less exciting than if I start speaking in a very exciting language and in a very enthusiastic way. Right, so, so the tonality of how we are actually communicating our thinking, our words, it's part of the linguistics. The third thing is nonverbal communication. And with nonverbal communication, it's primarily body language uh, that we talk about. Um, so if you are in, in a meeting and you see some people who are relaxed, you have their chair backwards, 
or there, there some people would be sitting like this, some people will be sitting on the left, some people are sitting on the right, or even if you, uh, you're, you, when you are talking, how are you standing or how are you, how's your posture? So all of that non-verbal communication, it reflects the state of your mind, what you're thinking, how you're, how you're uh, sharing information, right? What's in going inside your head, how you're sharing information. It's not just your words. It's also the, the way you say it. So are you talking very loudly? Are you talking very softly? Are you, are you mild? Um, are you, uh, so that all of that combined caters to the linguistic aspects. Now, I also mentioned here about pictures, sounds, feelings, tastes, smells, self-talk. So these are all ways that we represent what we see. I'm sorry, and, and what we see would be pictures, or what we hear would be sounds, what we feel, right? So this is also a way of representing our linguistics. How it feel, how we are understanding that information that we are either seeing outside or we are thinking. So it's all only part of these. So linguistics have these four general parts. Now, uh, if you pack them, uh, if you package the neuro part of it and linguistic part of it, right? So what you're seeing outside as pictures, sounds, feelings, and then you, you're making the, uh, an impression on your mind uh, in, an, in a visual way or an auditory way, how you learn, right? You can, you can learn via pictures, for example, the nervous system in, in our mind, how, it, how things work. So it's all, it's all uh, a, a part of it. They're all fixed. They're, they're not separate uh, is what I wanted to say. They're all together, right? Um, and when we start thinking about programming, it's, it's basically understanding our neurology and how we can combine what we see or hear with how we feel or, or, or what we make out of it, right? How we can create that kind of a strategy or, a, or a, a pattern that will help us get the results that we want, right? Um, so that's, that's the programming aspect of neuro-linguistic programming. Um, so what, how, what I mentioned here, I, I'll read it. For, for references, ability to discover and utilize our communication with self and others in our neurology to get our desired results. So how you're programming yourself, how you're changing your behaviors, how you're changing your actions, how you're changing your thoughts, your beliefs, your values, your, uh, your core being, how you're changing what, what you're, what's outside, how you in, uh, interpret, what, how information is coming to you, and how you utilize what you know to create that physiological and, um, and, and physical reality for yourself. That's, that's the programming part. And when we talk about neuro-linguistic programming, we work with uh, ourselves first, work with our own mindset. We understand how we, what we are seeing outside, what you are seeing in your inner mind, what you are understanding, what you're seeing, and how that makes sense to us, right? And how we can respond to things rather than react unconsciously. It's becoming more conscious of our unconscious reactions, creating new habits, creating new results. And uh, one of the common examples of, the, of use of neuro-linguistic programming is creating rapport. Um, so if you are in a group of people and, and you want to be part of that, conversation, how do you uh, uh, program your own thinking to uh, within five minutes become a part of that group, right? So uh, that's, that's one of the examples of how, how neuro-linguistic programming can do. When you, you see you've got a group of people out there who are, uh, who are happy or you're, who are having a conversation and you being an outsider from that group, although you know them, you don't know what you don't have a big rapport. You've never, never spoken to them very uh, in, a, in, a, in a friendly setting. And you go and stand with them. How do you program yourself or program your verbal, um, non-verbal language, your verbal language? How do you create your uh, physiology in such a way that people will start listening to you? So that's, that's one of the uh, very good examples of how neuro-linguistic programming can 
um, can help. I can give an example. I was working with a team. I started working in a team of 25 people at work and uh, last year. And there was a group of leaders, five leaders in that group who, who used to never let anybody else come in. And uh, within three to four weeks, I was part of that group, right? So in the, the leader said that we used to feel that we were like a rose petal, a rose with all of us part of the, as petals of that group and nobody else could come in. But now we feel that you are part of us. So that's the result that I was able to get with, with what, uh, what using NLP within three weeks. And nobody had been able to do it in three months. So that's, that's the example I wanted to give you and share my learnings with you today. Now, how NLP works. So there, NLP is, it's basically, um, there's a couple of things that, that are part of NLP. One is the NLP communication model. So it basically talks about specifically how communication works within the NLP frame, uh, methodology, how we can uh, look at any external event or what we think of it, how we use the concepts of delete, distort, generalize. Um, we, these are some of the filters we, we have and we uh, in, find out how we are interpreting those uh, info, that information in context of time, space, uh, matter, energy, language, memories, decisions, meta programs, values, beliefs, attitudes. So all of this based on what we do that creates an internal representation which, uh, is, which creates a state and state can be the emotional state here, right? So it creates an internal representation as, or an identity, I'm a, I'm a happy person or I'm a confident person and then creates that emotion that drives our behavior. And based on that emotion and that identity, we create our physiology. So we go into a lot of detail into the communication model. We understand it in, in a lot more detail when we, uh, when we learn about NLP. And uh, the presuppositions of NLP, these are basically 14, 14 to 15 principles that are really, really important. Um, they are kind of our life principles. And, and you might have uh, seen in some of my messaging as well, when I say respect for other person's model of the world, or uh, every people are not their behaviors, everyone is doing the best they can with the resources that are available to them, or you are in charge of your mind. So these are all kind of very, very high level principle based uh, concepts, which NLP assumes when you say presupposition, it's basically our assumption of uh, what, what everybody is doing, right? Uh, when I'm saying the meaning of communication is in the response you get, that means if I'm trying to say something to you and you're not understanding what I'm saying, the problem is that, it, it, that I need to take responsibility and, uh, and the response that you're giving, if it's not what I want, that means I need to change my communication. It's not your problem, it's my problem and I need to take responsibility. I need to change the way I communicate. That's just an example, but this is like a whole guiding universal principles a universal truths that we assume as part of NLP. And we uh, ensure that every person is trying, um, is getting what they want. And we also develop an understanding that it is us who's responsible for our emotions. It's us who's responsible for our results. And we, we need to do something about it. And we use the NLP communication model uh, as, uh, as a guide during our conversations, during our, our journey in life. So this, this is kind of in a very, very high level nutshell of how NLP works. I, I want to touch, uh, touch upon the fundamental concept of cause and effect. This, this, is, this is a very, very important um, thing that we uh, talk about when we are talking about neurolinguistic programming. It's although it's not part of the actual, uh, maybe say practitioner course or when we teach NLP, we don't really have this as a requirement. But it really helps to understand uh, the cause or cause in, uh, the causal impacts and the effects of how we think, right? So if I am in charge of my results, so anything that is giving, that's causing a uh, uh, failure 
in my life, that means I can change that uh, by doing, taking some, uh, some action. Everything is a feedback. Everything is a feedback. So when we say that we are not getting our results, that means we are doing something that's causing uh, the wrong results to appear. So that, and, and the causes for our wrong results are in my control. And right? that's the idea behind cause and effect. Uh, I'm in charge of how I experience all the events that happen in my life. Uh, it's, it's basically, I can't control. What, what I mean to say here is, I can't control all the outcomes that I want in my life, but I can control how I feel or how I experience the outcomes. For example, uh, if I am I'm working and I don't get a promotion uh, or I'm expecting a salary raise or I'm expecting a, a, a bonus or I'm expecting something in, in my job and I don't get it the way I want it. So I do get something, but I don't get what I was expecting, right? Now that can result in me either going back and working more harder and, and taking it as, as a feedback and going and, and uh, assuming that I need to do better, I need to take more feedback, I need to do this, I need to do that, or I can, I can just blame it on, on the circumstances, I can just blame it on everything else and not take responsibility. But if the, the idea behind NLP and cause and effect is that if I take responsibility for my experience, so I can, uh, what's in my control is how I respond. So if I take that negative result as another feedback of my action and another way of learning, then I will have more control, more power, and I can do something different to get a different result. I give an example of uh, uh, Thomas Edison in this case. He conducted, I think, less, more than 10,000, around 10,000 experiments before he could get the light bulb. So he always said that he found 10,000 ways of not creating a light bulb, and then he created the light bulb. So that's the kind of mindset that I wanted to uh, to share, right? And, and NLP, when you go into the details and when you practice it, you you kind of get into the habit of having that mindset. When I say I do not bl blame others from or I uh, from or others or myself, it's basically what actions I'm doing. And if, if uh, there, is a, uh, there is a very important lesson here is that blaming doesn't help anything. So when I say I blame myself, it's more around the principle, uh, more around the emotions of guilt, regret, et cetera, right? So, negative, so I, I blame myself and I say, oh, I did this, I did this, and I'm guilty and I can't kind of go ahead and, and do much. Or the idea is figure out if there is a cause, there is an effect, um, how can I deal with it? Right? So how can I create the causes that will have a different result? So that's, that's the idea behind it. And uh, the last thing is my current state or my current emotional state is because of the sum total of all my choices that were taken consciously or unconsciously. So sometimes people say, uh, hey, I was in a road accident. Uh, or I was in, um, uh, I had been to a particular city and there was flood, or I was into a, in a particular city and uh, somebody came and hit me from the back. How can that be my mistake? Well, the idea there is you can't control everything that is happening to you, but you have an option to control everything that's going on in your mind, all the, all the, emotions, if you have an understanding that whatever the other person did, I could not have done anything more to, to not have the outcome that, was, that happened. So if we accept that and we go ahead and try and do something more about that uh, similar situation, uh, not reacting, more responding to it and being calm, relaxed, um, that will probably be the the uh, the most important thing or most important result for us. The cause and effect has that particular power for it for us. 
I also wanted to talk about perception is projection. The the idea behind, I think we have heard, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the concepts that have been talked in the book, Secret, where you think what you want, write it down, and it should, and it it appears in your life, right? But a lot of people have done that. It's not come for them. So why is that? Well, it is. It's also about what's normal for us, right? If we we think about something that's normal for us, and this is uh, from Dr. Wayne Dyer's book, um, or the Power of Intention, um, that that I I say when he he says that. Uh, when things are that are normal for us, or if it feels normal for us to say, I will earn uh, an additional hundred thousand dollars this year, that means, and if that feels normal, then if I may do whatever I'm doing, if I take I make effort, I will get those an additional uh, amount of money. However, if I if I say something and if I don't believe in it from the core of my being, it doesn't feel normal to me. It's not going to happen. And that's one of the things how Dr. Wayne Dyer explains it. And uh, the, some of the things that I I think clearly when, when we talk about perception is projection is we really create our reality. Uh, I've mentioned this in some of my messages as well, um, where if we, a, a human mind cannot think anything that's not physically possible for them. For example, everything that we see in front of us today has been created within our imagination first, and then it has become a reality later. So we create our own reality, right? Now, second thing is when we are talking, looking at events in our life, they may not, there will be times when we don't have control of what events happen in our life, but how we choose to react or respond is in our control. So if we are in a traffic jam, we can be happy that at least we are uh, progressing or we are alive, or we can be frustrated or angry that we're stuck and we can't do anything about it. Uh, so suppose you are in a traffic jam and we are with your family in the car, you could probably play a game with the car, in the car with your family or, or talk, talk through, it's, more imp it's a good family time to have a family conversation. Right, uh, rather than driving. So if you're stuck, you can have that, or you can choose to ignore uh, the family time and choose to be uh, angry or frustrated or show your emotions and react. So that's that's the kind of thinking. So what we perceive in our mind is what we get outside. So when we say energy flows where attention goes, every positive uh, think thinking that we have will create an energy that will radiate out from us, right? And if we even think of a negative emotion, um, if you are angry, you will you will notice that every everybody around you be, it becomes in an angry or agitated state. If you are, so sim simple thing like laughter, if you start laughing even without reason, people around you will start laughing, right? We are creating that positive energy. So if you create that energy, every attention goes there, right? Mindset matters. Our mindset is really important. Um, so how we think about our existence, what we have in life matters to, uh, and that's what we get in, in our life. So perception, how we perceive, how, what our mindset is, that's what you get. So if you think that you are happier, you think that you are achieving your goals, or you're better than what year you were last year, you will be better where you are this year, next year, at the same time. The mindset is all about where you think you are. If you think you are in a problem, you will be in a problem. If you think you're in a problem, but you're exploring ways to get out of it, so you'll, you'll find ways to get out of it. So that's the idea behind perception is projection. When I talk about a positive thought, it's 100 times more powerful than negative thought. Imagine, um, this is a simple exercise. So if you imagine you are the last time when you were really, really happy with your family and you, you go into, you can actually think about that specific event and start to uh, close your eyes, go into, your, into that particular thought um, and remember that event and remember how people were happier, where we love being in, in, 
enjoying the time with everyone, right? It was the best time of your life. You actually are able to get into that state right now, very quickly. And it is so, so strong if you are really in that thought. It's so strong that any negative thought that comes is not going to impact you because you're already in that happy state. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's, it's every positive thought is hundred times more powerful. So if you start getting negative, you you need to have um, some kind of a emotional um, uh, a positive emotional um, cup or, or 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 a wallet with you, which will actually where you can just open it or drink your positivity or you open it, pull it out see something, a photo, uh, uh, an audio, something that will get you out of that negative state in a, in a flash. That, that's a, so how you perceive what your life has, and that's what you get projected out. So that's the idea behind perception of projection. I, I wanted to talk about real life examples. And some of the examples um, that I have, I have used and I've seen is um, in resolving conflicts, in negotiating like a pro. So when you talk about resolving conflicts, so conflict is something that stops us from thinking about any other option. So how many times have you thought, uh, one part of me thinks that I should do X, one thought of part of me thinks I should, I should do Y. Or for example, you wanted to, do, uh, wanted to go out and play, but you sat down and, and, and watched movie. You, you wanted to go out and and do something, but you did something else. So you that that's kind of a conflict, right? And when you say negotiating like negotiating like a pro, it's more around um, how you get a common understanding. When negotiation will only happen when two p two sides feel that there is a win win, right? So how do you create a win win in a, every situation? And and NLP with the use of a language and understanding the higher purpose. We, we can actually uh, bring people or align people together. Um, a, a common example uh, I can say about resolving conflicts and negotiating in, in, my, um, uh, in my world is when I was working uh, in a team where um, I, was, I was working in a software and IT team where there was a testing team and, and, a, and a IT development teams, people who develop the software and they developing software, they were doing some work and the testing team who were QA, who were testing that and they had conflict and I had to bring them up to a common purpose of guys, we are in this together. We have to ensure that this goes in both of your, in, uh, all, both your in, inputs and, uh, are in, important. So how can we work together to get the outcome, which is the end, end product? So uh, and so it, it was just an understanding of both sides and and both parts from in, in this case where one part was thinking yet yeah, my work is more important another part was saying my work is more important and then the achieving the end goal was actually more important for both of them so bringing both of them to that end goal and and helping them understand that both parts have that common goal brought them uh, together and the conflict got resolved. When I talk about more, find motivation and build confidence for success, uh, so it, this is more around how what is our real purpose, what do we really want to do, and and practicing small steps, right? Taking smaller steps and learning from each experience, and and I, having that mindset that uh, every experience helps us grow, even if we don't get the outcome, but we at least know that we are better than where we were before. And, and keep going. So, and, and that consistent practice uh, of doing smaller things, learning from them, sometimes we'll succeed, sometimes we'll fail, but we are building our confidence, we are improving. For example, when I talked about my writing, um, I started off uh, by just thinking that I will write for, for uh, I'll, I'll write like 100 words or, le or less, um, and and I'll do it for two months and see how it progresses. But now I've been doing it for six months. So it's it's something that that you start off and you you keep going and your mindset, your conscious and your unconscious, they align, right? And and, and you keep keep going and get the things. We talk about accomplished goals by setting achievable outcomes. NLP comes with something called. 
keys to achievable outcomes. It's it's an exercise that we use to set our goals very clearly in a way that we know when we are achieving those goals that we have succeeded, right? So uh, this is an example for accomplished goals can be uh, things like weight loss or things like, um, uh, can I, let me think about an example uh, when we think about accomplishing goals. I'm sure a lot of you would have would have seen um, the uh, the sports right so if you're if you are in a in a game maybe a cricket match and you you want to um, score 50 runs and how do you go ahead by uh, to accomplish that goal is you either uh, you you'll probably create a strategy right so you'll create but before we actually create strategy you need to score 50 runs you will know okay how many overs and uh, which which uh, how do we need to score faster before we need to score faster after how do we need to proceed so you've got a way for uh, accomplishing that goal and you have a clear definition of what that goal is right uh, that you have to score so if you don't score you lose so but when you lose you also have learned how you what you could you have done differently to to achieve it so that's how you think about goals uh, when I talk about personal growth and breakthrough experience, this is about understanding why we have problems. Uh, wh what are the reasons? What are our values? How do we define those values? How do we interpret the use usage of those values? How do we utilize those values to uh, understand why we are having emotions uh, that are negative? Uh, how can we get rid of those emotions? How can we get rid of bad habits? And uh, how can we create new habits? How can we create successful strategies? So all of this comes as part of our personal growth. And, and the breakthrough experience is essentially where you create, um, you work with somebody who has, uh, who will be non-judgmental, right? Who will listen to you and who will support you in your in your failures, support you in your successes, and and help you create the the confidence, create the mindset of success, success and excellence, and help you ensure that you are on the right track, right path. So that's the breakthrough experience. Uh, and when we talk about improving emotional intelligence, this is basically when you are. And when you understand all the 14 or 15 presuppositions, we understand all the NLP communication model. Uh, you improve your EI, EI scores. And this is, this is, uh, this is a very important step in, uh, with NLP is it definitely improves your emotional intelligence. You become more compassionate, you become more empathetic, you become more in, in, inspired, you become more empowered. You're uh, you're always in a in a frame of mind that that you can go proceed further. You always think about what you want, and any any negative uh, experience that you have, you're in control of your emotions. You understand why they are happening, and you understand what you can do about them, and you consciously take steps to con improve yourself. If you are failing in certain aspects you you take steps and you're moving forward so those are those are the reasons why nlp has been really really useful and it continues to be uh, one of the uh, leading things in the in the industry right now um, where people start doing the nlp courses and uh, they they work with practitioners nlp coaches and start getting results and um, get results faster than what they would without um, without help. I that's all I had for today. Is if there are any questions, I can take questions now.
Mm. Hey, Chandan, my question. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this session. Uh, my question is that sometimes, like uh, people like me who who speak two languages, mm -hmm. uh, my native language is Hindi, and then I my business language is English, and I live in a country. So sometimes my thought patterns are continuous in Hindi, but I have to think in English, and sometimes the meanings are different, mm -hmm. and I am, you know, not able to catch like how to start you know should i start thinking in english or should i continue thinking in hindi and then communicate in english so the motivations and all these words they don't uh, sometimes resonate inside mm -hmm. as much as uh, what it resonates when they are in hindi okay so how you know how can nlp help because this is linguistic right Right. And all day, uh, like whole day, I am, if I am at work, I'm talking in English. When I'm at home, I'm talking in Hindi. Uh, so both languages, the different tone, different words, uh, different emotions, completely different. What should be the strategy like in, in those kind of scenarios? Because I want result in both the languages, of course. Okay. This is... Uh... See, I'm not, I, I can't give you a specific answer for your problem right now because it might mm -hmm. take more time. The yes. idea is if you understand the fundamental cause, cause and effect, uh, concept of cause and mm -hmm. effect, if you're mm -hmm. not getting results from what you want, right? That means you, there is something that you're doing that is getting the results you don't want. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, there is, you need to, find out what you're actually doing that is not getting you the results. So a quick tip would be to list down the things that you're doing right now mm -hmm. because of which you are or not doing right now because of which you're not getting the results, mm. right? And, and then you, you probably have an answer that there is something that you need to change. So is there an online course that I need to attend? Or is there more listening that I need to do? Um, mm. Do can I ask these pe these people with whom I'm talking um, that I don't understand? Can you be a bit slow? Like I said, language is all about tonality, right? So the mm. language linguistics is about the language tonality, non-verbal communication. So uh, how what is it that's missing? We we'll, you'll need to analyze, do some work on yourself to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is. These can be potential reasons and then test, right? Everything that NLP does is provide you with strategies, but you have to test those strategies because if you don't, uh, if there is no one way. Every human being is different. Okay. Every mind is different. So there cannot be one answer for, for every problem, right? Where well, you can figure out, is it a problem in the tonality? Or is it a problem in the speed of how others are saying? Uh, that I don't understand? Is it the words that I don't understand? Um, or is it my perception that's stopping mm. me? There can be lots of reasons. So you need mm -hmm. to probably um, go back to the drawing board and, and list down what are the mm. things that can be a blocker or limiting me from thinking that way. Yep. And then, then work on those one by one. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Give me some guidelines. Yes. Sure. Cool. Thank you. And is there any book that you recommend that, I mean, if we, we don't want to go into NLP, but if you want to understand like how we can use in our day-to-day -day life as NLP, is there any book that we can use? Yes. There is a book uh, from Sue Knight, which is called NLP okay. at Work, okay. uh, which is which I have found very interesting. Uh, it, it gives you practical uh, ways to actually make changes, right? So um, I have picked up some references from that as well. If you look at the definition of NLP. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, Sue Knight. Yeah, yeah. So there are, there are many other books that you can use. Hmm. Uh, but this is one of the 
books that that has been really well uh, received okay all right great thanks welcome any other questions no not from me great rosemary i think i see you online i'm not sure if you're there do you have any other questions it's just just two of you i can i know you have 10 minutes i can definitely answer if there is any hello can you see me oh hi, hi yes. how are you yeah hi <laughs> Sorry, I was no still problem. cooking and uh, I had a few, <laughs> a big household and uh, sorry, let me just get this off. No problem. Sorry. Um, okay, sorry about that. I was, yes, look, I, I'm, um, I don't have any questions. Uh, it's pretty interesting what you've got to say. I must admit I was only listening to half while I was cooking and preparing and running from one room to another because I don't have a kitchen. And uh, in lockdown, so I've had a bit of a few issues, but uh, I'm maintaining my sanity with my family. But um, yeah, I uh, I uh, like all that stuff that you talk about, and it's um, really putting yourself in the right headspace. And um, I have a practice every day, so I try and practice this every day. So any breathing, yoga, uh, mindfulness, awareness walking meditations and I think everything that you say is it's there's a lot of possibilities and I think sometimes we limit ourselves when we think too yeah. much and uh it's it's coming out of that and trusting um the higher power or the higher source or whatever else you believe in so yeah I I enjoy what you do and uh, what you're saying. So it resonates with me. So I was pretty happy to listen to you and meet your other friend down there. Hello there. I... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing, then we'll uh, end the session. And uh, yep. if if you guys can give me a feedback uh, on the session, that will be I'll great. I will send a link. see if I get my... Um... Sure. Sorry, I can't hear you because volume. Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I can hear you now. It's much better. Sorry, I'm yeah. in my laundry. This this is where I'm doing all my preparation. <laughs> yeah. So um, what I was saying was um, I will be finishing off with no more questions. And if we if I can request some feedback on the session. That'll be great so that um, I can use it to improve for the sessions that I might be doing on the same topic. Okay, I may sure. have to uh, re-listen to some of it because I did miss Absolutely. some of it because I was I was in and out. So um, sure. I'll, will you send me the... Uh, I will. Yeah, and yes. then I'll have a, another look at it and then I'll just go from there. Sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Thank well thanks. So Thank, thanks for organizing it. Thank and uh, I, I think what you're doing is wonderful. And I think it's great that you're putting it out there and um, getting people interested and getting them to uh, be aware. And especially at this time when everything's lockdown is seriously a mess. That's true. <laughs> and and uh, it is. And it's messing with around with, it's messing around with a lot of people and they need you more than ever, to be honest, um, because they need that stability. People are a mess because they're locked in. They can't do anything now. This new two-week band in, so I'm not. I'm not going to get a kitchen now for another five weeks. So <laughs> I'm the one that needs all this stuff. Sure. Um, but you know, please keep on doing what you're doing. I'm. Uh, it's important. I think it's more important now than ever. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll. I'll continue doing. Um, I, I did start off last just because of uh, the lockdowns and all, it's become more important. I understand that. And uh, I, I hope that things will, will get better for you and, um, and let us know if there's anything I can do for help, any, for the help. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Chanda. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Meeting you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Take care now. All right. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.